Hey, we're Whiskey Fancies. I'm Chris. And I'm Kara. What do we have today, Kara? San Francisco Distilling Company, 49 Mile Bourbon. Nice. I'm confused why it's called San Francisco Distilling, only because when you look on the back, it says Elk, California. Close enough? Sure. Sure. Um, there's not a lot of information we can find about this. They're very vague and from the two different other sources that had tried to do a review, written reviews, they had the same problem. It's a little confusing. Yeah. We'll do our best. They're very vague. So we don't know if they're sourcing, if it's MGP, Kentucky, it's not the wrong distill it except for this one bottle we noticed. This one, I noticed it says distilled and bottled by San Francisco yeah. Distilling Company. But I wonder if that I wonder if that still qualifies distilled by if you like request your own recipe. Exactly. I don't know what the terminology, the legal terminology is. There's nowhere it's online confusing. that says that they distill their own bourbon for these particular bottles. At least the not, only, at least not yet. It's not yet. It just says that they're resting. That's it. Taking a nap. They're taking a little little snoozer. Yeah, a couple years. Yes. And what led us to get into these is, besides being craft distiller, is this nice little pretty San story, story that they have with it. Is they go on about this whole story about how a lot of the border was built from sunken ships. And when I took her up there, we found some little areas in the Embarcadero and Wharf Center or Wharf area that had like the old the nails, ship nails, the ship yeah. nails embedded into the sidewalk. It, it was just a really fun. cute little thing. So it was more of like a sentimental purchase, purchase yeah. for us yeah. besides being a sexy bottle. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. I agree. And we also love to support craft distillers. Yes. So whenever we have the opportunity to purchase something new and different, we try to do that when we can. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so shall we, I think we should try the straight bourbon whiskey coming no. in at 45%. They're yes. both 45%, they which are. is a little interesting. One's a single barrel and it, this has an age on the bottle that says seven years. This single is not barrel, age stated. Proof down to 45, not age stated, but let's, let's see, same proof. Completely different color, different color. One's much this darker is like than the other. This like straw, and this would be almost like honey. Mm -hmm. I get vanilla with almost clove spice behind it. Do you smell that? In a small batch. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm working. It's very soft on the nose. Yeah. Not much. There's a little bit of alcohol mm. if you go too deep. Like if you did take a big um, you stinker honker in there. I always stick my nose in a little too far. It's very uh, soft, just like how you would perceive by looking at it. It almost looks like a young scotch, doesn't it? Well, scotch looks a little yellower to me. True. But whatever. It smells nice. Why don't we get into the palette? Sure. Vanilla in the front, followed by like an aged wood in the mid palette. Um, I'm conflicted because it's very muted and soft, like an easy budget shelf sitter bourbon that you would always buy and purchase. But it has age to it. There's definitely. It's not young. There's definitely a wood influence that you don't get on young whiskeys. Uh, like a soft rounded wood in the middle. Yeah. But I like that. I like this. I enjoy it. But like I said, it's nice budget bourbon, well rounded. At a premium price. At a yeah, very high premium price. And that's where I'm conflicted. It's about fifty dollars, I would say. Forty nine dollars. And oh, that's wow. an ouch. But the craft, they don't distill their own, so it's sourcing. It's tricky at and this point. It, it has age to it. It does. I can You can tell. Either that, that or they're really exceptional blenders. I doubt that. Mm. There's definitely age. You, it's you really can't blend this You so can't much. blend out youth, right? I mean, that would be a magic. Yes. This is... It reminds me of... Really familiar. 
This is a little Barton esque. Uh huh. That's good though. I, I like it. I don't think this is MGP. I don't think it is. Uh, mm, I'd, be so I'd be surprised. Extremely surprised. Mm -hmm. I would love to be wrong. Or if it is MGP, hey, <laughs> you got some good socks. But I. This has got a familiarity to me. So I just remembered an MGP so that I really like. 1792 small match, a little bit. Which is Barton. Slight. That's yeah, slight, but older. Smoke Wagon small batch. Oh, yeah. Is MGP. But that's a high rye. Right. But. This isn't the high rye. Doesn't taste like it. But. Yeah. Maybe. What's making my brain connect, though, is the honey palette. Mm hmm. I get a lot of honey on Smoke yeah. Wagon small batch. Yeah. So maybe that's why my brain connected it to. Mm hmm. If this was in the same price point as other 45%. Availability like Elisha Craig, I would might gravitate toward this. I would even be accept, uh, happy if it was in the smoke wagon price, straight oh, yeah. bourbon of thirty to thirty five dollars. Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. That's a forty five percent, yeah, and that's one of my favorite low proof bourbon. Yeah, it's so. it's tasty, but mm, okay. So let's move on to the. Let's move on before we start getting on this wormhole. Yeah, let's go to the uh, the uh, single barrel. We have color is so dark. Oh my lord! Too. For being a forty five percent, that's actually pretty dark. Let's start. That's it dark. is for anybody who wants to know. It's called. It says it's aged seven years. It's barrel number two. Bottle one seventy. I feel sad that we don't have barrel number one. Well, I don't feel sad since no, two is my favorite number. No, but now I gotta figure out how many bottles before us to get bottle one. Damn it, we were so off. This is straight wilderness in a glass. In the best way. Like, I f it's, feels like it's like... Like you're in Yosemite mountain, or something. The mountains near a, a beautiful lake. It has a forest smell, like yeah, pine. Yeah, like pine mixed with cedar, right? What? That's amazing. It's... For anybody that is familiar with gin, oh that's a juniper more it's forward like, mm -hmm. note to it, this is kind of what it smells like. That's amazing. I really like that. That takes me to a This whole... is so weird. It almost smells like a gin. This nose transports me to a completely different place. It's amazing. I love that. It's like going in through the wardrobe in Narnia. Oh, yeah. With, like, the snow-covered forest. Oh, that smells so good, doesn't it? It does. In a weird way. Oh, I love this. Okay, I cannot wait like to... Bourbon. I cannot wait... No, it doesn't. I cannot wait to jump into okay. the palette. I get silky caramel right up front. Oh, what's that? There's no forest in the palette, so that's a plus. What's that in the mid-palette? It's almost like... I don't... Okay. I am... Oh, my God. I am so... These are extremely familiar. What is that? I don't know, but they are related. They have to be related. This is so phenomenal. This has more flavor and depth than the small batch, but the small batch is, is there. It's, it's, it's complex too, but... Oh my god, I can't stop. I cannot stop noticing this glass. It's really good. Okay, I'm, I'm having an inner battle here. Sure, what is it? I know what we paid for this. And what I'm getting, I know it could be so much more and I would feel not as disappointed at what we paid for it if it was proofed a little bit higher. Yeah. So Does that make sense? Yeah. If I didn't know the price, I would be blown away. Yeah. I would too. Blown away. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, the proof is a little lower than I would expect to prefer. Now, however, yeah. after I drink specifically the single barrel, I don't miss anything in the proof range. It, it there's just so much complex flavor, complex flavors packed into that forty-five percent. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad no, no, that no, it's no. forty-five. No, I'm not either. But now, the now the, the price that comes in later. Okay. The, now this. Let's wait for it. The forty-five percent on the regular bourbon, mm -hmm. I think it's a little thin in just the finish, mm -hmm. but it, there's a lot of stuff there. Is it exceptional? 
maybe not, but super solid. When you factor in the price, and I will tell you, this one is 50. At $49. At 45% alcohol. And this is 75 mm -hmm. at 45%. Mm -hmm. We knew what we are getting into. Now, when you, when you start to quantify the price value situation with the experience that you're getting in the glass, mm -hmm. I think they're a little overpriced. Oh, absolutely. But like, what, 20%? <laughs> yeah, more. Especially for this guy. But, they don't do anything... Offensive. Wrong. There's mm -hmm. nothing there that sticks out that says, oh, I wish it wasn't this, I wish it wasn't that. So it, it leaves me in a place that the bourbon is really great. The price point is a little tricky. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's craft, so it's they're going to have a little bit of markup because it's craft. Maybe they put all their money in the marketing. I would say probably. There's mm -hmm. I would say there's a San Francisco tax. I'll just call mm -hmm. it a California tax because mm -hmm. it's a little pricier sure. to do things out here. Um. Discount, if you don't take into price into the equation, I think there's something that you should experience because they're different and they're fun. And there is something that intrigues me specifically on this single barrel. I could spend all all day just nosing it. Oh yeah. So there's definitely something there. If you must include price when you're purchasing a whiskey, mm -hmm. which is fair, which is fair. I would have to say that they might be a pass at this price. Yes. I agree with that. However, I am intrigued at what the future is going to hold for these distillers because mm -hmm. for sure it doesn't, from the label, the single barrel mm -hmm. doesn't look like it's their own dis distillate. Mm -hmm. This one is a little murky and questionable with the labeling. But they taste but familiar to each other. They do. So it's, it's really tricky. I am going to be on the lookout for mm -hmm. the next offering from this distillery. Okay. They are intriguing. I don't discount them. Do I know that they're a little pricey? I understand. Uh, I would just have to make room in my bur bourbon budget for it. Based on the nose, I think I would make room for this one. Really? Even at I, the, even at I the price? don't know yeah. why. There's just something I, I just, I'm like, it's so unique. It is unique. When you get into oh. bourbons a lot, mm -hmm. um, it feels like they're all in the same wheelhouse mm -hmm. to me. Like, oh, you get the beautiful caramels and corns yeah, and whatever, yeah. right? The palette is very similar to that. It's there, similar, there's a, there's a different. note, there's something a note different. on the mid palette that's mm -hmm. different enough, and the nose is so unique that I think I would pay for it. But I, I think if if it was even at fifty percent, because I'm not trying to be like a proof snob. That's not it at all. No, the I, flavors are there, and they remained it at forty. I would love to see what they can do at fifty. Exactly, yeah. and then maybe I would revisit it as like okay, mm. because at forty five percent, there's Elijah Craig, there's Buffalo Trace, there's a whole bunch of other things that are under thirty dollars that you can get for How that. How much was that Sonoma barrel? Proof? I think that was fifty or fifty five. I would love to see that at 50. That was their own still. I would love to see this at 50. I, I think if the fla the flavors held up at 45, I don't think there's going to be anything offensive at, at 50. 50%. And even at 50%, that $75 is a high markup. It is a little high. But yeah. it, I'm thinking it might stand out more. Because if you put this in a blind against some other offerings in that price range... I think I would pick this as a winner off the nose. Yeah, but on the palate, I think others that are higher proof might have more complexity because of the proof. Right. I'm thinking where this originated from is pretty good. Is good on its own. Yeah. And maybe it's a business decision to proof it down to maximize your output and your volume to get capital. I get it from a business standpoint, but from a consumer side, $75 is a hard pill to swallow when there's an Elijah Craig barrel proof I can get for cheaper. See, when you can, when you say that, mm. that's no. really hard. But they're a bigger distillery. They can do that. It's So I get it, but it's, $75 for 45%, that's it's hard. It, it's hard. And that's not coming from a proof snob because it's good, but it could be so much 
better that we would that justify we, it has to be i bet it would be amazing it would be really amazing i would just love to pull to, a more percentage i would higher. love to see them do something yeah. a little bit higher yeah just like woodford reserve but see, a lot of their special releases are like are well, that weird some, less than a hundred percent proof yeah. over a hundred dollars do we have those no no i don't think those are worth it to begin with it's just but it like it, it goes back to the whole tricky value True. per experience thing. It's it's oh, really yeah. it's if really that's hard. why we got into it. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we bought these. No regrets. No regrets. No. I uh, if money is no option, that you don't really care how much you pay for bourbon, I think you should try them because they're fun. Yeah. There's something so intriguing. Like it, I just can't get over this. There's something familiar There's about it. There's just something that and... just, like, it draws me in. So if bourbon pricing mm -hmm. wasn't an option, mm -hmm. I would say it's a definite buy on the single barrel, uh, specifically this barrel, too. I don't know if I would do that qu quite of a ringing endorsement for the small batch. It's, it's good. It's good. It doesn't do no. anything wrong. I think it might just be a little bit more simple for my taste. I but think it's $20 overpriced. Oh, for sure. If this was a $30 bourbon, yeah, for sure. No, that's if, a buy. If they put more money into it to what they're trying to get out of it, well, then that they just made bad decisions to try to make up for it. Business I don't is, know. Business I don't is hard, know. right? Business is hard. Mm. So I'm not going to comment on that, but the specific whiskey that we're sitting here with, I'm not mad at any of the things that they're doing. Mm. I do find them a little bit overpriced. However, if you can afford to uh, splurge a little bit to try a craft, I say do it. They're just fun. I don't think there's anything I don't like about it. There's nothing I can find that I don't like, except for the price. And the mm. price has nothing to do with the flavor. No. If, if yeah. So that's what take, I'm Take the high price out of it. Yeah. I would say a high recommend. I am getting 1792 small batch off of this every day, all day, every time I go back to it. I, s I taste 1792. Slightly water down. Put extra age on it. Yes. Isn't that weird? But it's a little bit more muted. Yeah. It's like, it's 17.92 with a couple extra years, but here, let's add some more water on it. I, I, it's I'm, so weird. I really want good. to know, like, is is mm -hmm. it sourced from a distillery that's, you know, a, a brand, or is it MGP sourced? Like, I'm really, I'm really intrigued to know. Will that factor in the high cost for me? No, because either way, it's, it's sourced from something. It's... The whiskey... It's hard to explain. I think we both agree the whiskey... In it's both good. bottles is good. The price is a different story, and I think we'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can have a definitely try at least a sample of this, either in a bar or something you can get a sample. It, I think it's worth your while to to try it. It's I find it to be delicious. Do you? I just I do, but I just oh it kills me that it's seventy five. Yes, because I I really enjoy it. This would be like ending the night drink, you know, when you go it's down in proof. It's really good, but because of the price, I, I can't. It's tricky. I can't. I don't it's regret tricky. it. Right. Because it's it's good. It, it would be a disappointment if it was a shit. Yeah. Would it be, if it, it, you're just saying it's hard to pull the trigger on the next bottle. Absolutely. Do you know, what else can $75 get you? A couple bottles and some offerings that are really amazing. I know. It, it's hard. Or... It's really tricky. Yeah, it is. But those are business decisions that luckily we don't have to be... I love this. I'm so glad I'm not in the bourbon into. business because no. I, I couldn't make these decisions. I am loving the nose in this one. It's sort of getting a little winter right now. The outdoors. It's so weird. It's like snowy, snow-capped mountains. It's so strange. It's so I'm weird. loving the nose. It's a Narnia bourbon. Ugh. Anyway... Thank you for joining us. Check out, see if you have any San Francisco uh, distilling availability in your area. If you like what we're doing, please remember to subscribe, like, and give us a comment. Let us know what you think of different crafts distillers in your area. Mm -hmm. All right. Cheers. Cheers.